Welcome to the third online class for yoga in Salt Spring and I hope that this is helping you get through your week. It's a tough time for a lot of us to be isolated and social distancing away from our families, um, loss of work, loss of income. I know there are lots of issues. So I hope that some, some yoga practice might help you, uh, encourage you to get on your mat, take a little time for yourself and get through the, the self-isolation. We're working on balancing today and the pose is maybe more difficult than the last two classes. If they are, I've given you gradual stopping points like bus stops on the route so that you can say, this is where I'm gonna go and stay there. And remember, you can always pause, you can always uh, redo the pose or stay in it longer. Today, you're going to need a chair, a brick or two and a strap. And I did check with PharmaSave and they have some of these yoga items. So if you haven't got any and you want to increase your prop uh, inventory, then uh, check it out. And let's get on with the class. We're going to start off with a preparation for Vriksasana. So Vriksasana is tree pose. We're going to do it a little bit differently. So this is how we'll begin. Stepping up onto your brick, raising the other leg, bringing it close into the body, hugging it close, and step down. And we'll do that three times each side. So step on your brick, lift the leg up high, release down. Step up on the brick, release the leg high, step down and then change sides so this time on the left leg bring it up so you're bringing it up close to the body got some flexibility happening here in the pelvis lifting it up and final time lifting it up top so sometimes in class we've practiced rixasana like this on a on a brick and we're going to do the same today so step up on your brick with your right leg have a chair handy if you need it or a wall behind you and you're going to bring that leg up take it out to the side release it down the hands on the hips to begin with take your time get your balance use your breath and then when you're ready stretch the arms up reaching up, although releasing the shoulders down, taking the tailbone down, the front ribs back, and bring the arms back towards the ears. And then come down, and release. Get ready for the second side. Stand on your brick. Spread the sole of the foot. Bring the other leg up into the groin. Hands on the hips whilst you establish your balance. And then bring the arms up, reach up, stretch any amount. Press the right heel into the left groin purposefully to stop the slipping of the heel and to get more lift in the trunk. Use your breath to stabilize. And we're working on about half a minute each side for these poses and then come down. Vriksasana, the tree pose. Garudasana, eagle pose. We're going to do this against a wall to begin with. So this is stage one. So take yourself beside a wall. Have the feet about 12 inches away from the wall, back against the wall, and get ready to slide up and down with the pose. So we know that there are arms involved in this, we know that there are legs involved in this. We're going to do them separately and then put them together. So as you slide down the wall, you're going to bring up the left leg high, cross it over, tuck it around behind, and keep the arms out for balance and equilibrium as you take the tailbone in and slide down the wall. And then come up, change legs. So you can use the arms for balance, slide down the wall, lift the right leg up high, tuck it behind, and if it doesn't tuck, you can use your hand to help it on its way. So you come down into eagle pose for legs, 
and out. So we'll do this in preparation. Now we'll add the arms still against the wall. Coming down. Lift up the left leg, swing it over the top, catch it behind or help it with your hand. Take the arms out to the side, bend the elbows, and the opposite arm comes over the top. You're lifting the elbows and you're in Garudasana, supported by the wall. Lift the elbows up to the height of your shoulders, look through the wrists softly. Stretch out, come up, release. Bend the knees. Take the left leg over the right, tuck it behind, stretch the arms out, bend at the elbow, left over right. So it's the opposite arm to the leg that's crossed over. Lift the elbows. Breathe. Keep the back against the wall. Tailbone tucked in. Release and come up. Come away from the wall for the second time. Or you can stand by the wall and do the pose again. Here we go. Standing on the right leg. Just like Vrikshasana, you give that leg a moment to take the responsibility. Lift the left leg up. Tuck it behind. Stretch the arms out for balance. Bend the elbows, opposite arms, so right over left. Lift the elbows up. Tuck the tailbone under. Hold and breathe. Keep the eyes softly focusing, gazing through the wrists. Elbows lifted, chest lifted, and slowly come out. Take a breath and wait on the left leg. Give that left leg a moment. Stretch the toes, spread the skin on the foot for maximum balance. Bring the right leg over the left, tuck it behind, use your hand if you need to. Stretch the arms out, bend at the elbows, left over right. Lift the elbows, tailbone moves down towards the mat. As you get a gentle bend in the knees, gaze softly through the wrists, pressing the palms together so that you're feeling some engagement in the trapezius. Use your breath and then slowly come up and come out. That's Garudasana or Eagle Pose. Next we're taking Udva Prasarita Ekapadasana, which means that it's a, a forward bend, one leg raised at the back. So there's balance involved, although in the final pose you do have one arm and one leg on the mat. We're going to do some preparations, and for that you'll need a chair, and some of you may stop with the chair and not go further, which is fine. You still get the principles of the pose. So stand facing your chair with the legs slightly apart, hands on the hips. Inhale as you take the head back, exhale forward, come down into Uttanasana. Stretch the arms out wide, lengthen the front chest and reach now. So let the head hang, release the neck, release the head in Uttanasana for preparation. So open the backs of the knees, open the backs of the thighs. Completely release the upper body forward. And hands on the hips. Come on. So that's one preparation. The next one we'll do is using the chair for the forward extension. So this time, again, feet slightly apart, hands on the hips. Open the chest, inhale. Exhale as you come forward. Walk the hands forward onto the chair using the palms to press into the chair to get maximum extension through the whole of the front body and through the arms. Upper arms extended, palms extended, looking forward. So there's a lot of length involved in the upper chest and this may be already quite a stretch. So from here we're going to put the weight onto the left leg, lift the right leg. Doesn't have to be too high, if you get too high, you begin to turn to the side. We want the thigh rolling down, 
so that there's an evenness over the pelvis. So keep the pelvis even, stretch that heel away from you and lengthen. So we're almost in warrior pose three, Verbadrasana three at this point. Lengthen it, replace the leg, take a breath and then bring the left leg up, extending through the heel as if your body was being stretched from one side to the other. Lengthening through the heel, rolling the left hip crease down to even the pelvis and then replace, walk back, come up, take a breath. Next stage we're going to take the hands from the chair onto the mat, again this might be your bus stop and the third time we'll do the full pose. All right. So hands on the hips, take a breath, open the chest, exhale forward, and we started off with the hands on the chair. Now we're going to bring them down onto the floor. If that doesn't work for you, we've got bricks. You can always place your hand onto the bricks as your next stage. So I'll leave that there for you to use as an option. So with the hands on the floor, legs in Uttanasana, we're now going to take the left leg up, lengthen through the chest, left leg up. So extend front chest, extend the back of the thigh up, lifting through the back of the thigh and then release down. Take a breath, lift up through the right leg, lengthening the heel away from you, evenness through the pelvis. And to do that you're rolling this thigh down, and gathering the front thighs towards each other. And then release, come up, take a breath. So at this point if you want to pause and do the first two again, that's where you're going to stop and make your own choices for the pose. So next is the full pose, Ordva Prasarita Ekapadasana. So we're going to take the hands on the hips, open the chest, exhale forward. With the left hand resting on the floor, I'm taking the right hand behind the left leg, so opposite leg. So the right hand comes behind the ankle, forearm comes behind the calf. I'm going to use the left arm for balance and raise the leg, the right leg. So first of all, my chest is extended. Secondly, I'm going to take the chest down towards the shin. So chest to thigh, chin to shin, taking the head down. So hold it there for a few breaths, lifting up through the back of the thigh, and then release down, and get ready to change. Left hand on the back of the right thigh, lifting up, lengthening the chest, and then releasing forward. pose. We've got um, a couple more standing poses to come in the balance sequence. This is half moon pose. So Ardha Chandrasana. I'm going to demonstrate this three ways. So you can follow along, do all three ways, choose the one you like best, press pause and do the pose to your heart's content. We're going to start off against the wall. So step into a wide stride. Trikonasana stride, and we'll take Trikonasana to the right before we move into the Adha Chandrasana. 
I'm using the wall. I'm right against the wall. So if balance is an issue, you've got it here for you. Take the left hand to the hip, look down, bend the right knee, take the brick a little bit more in front of your toe, about a foot in front of your small toe, pivot, this is the important part, pivot onto the front leg, straighten the front leg, and then with the hand on the brick, you're gonna open the chest. So the whole of the chest is opening, pressing the foot away from you, stretch the arm up. If you've got straps to hold on to, so much the better, or cherry blossom. That works too. So stretch the arm up, open the groin, and enjoy this, this beautiful feeling of space in the chest. Lift the kneecaps, open the backs of the knees, and then to come down, hand on the hip, look down, bend the front knee, reach back into Trikonasana, come up. So second side. I'm gonna move off center on my mat so that I've got a chance to have the brick on the mat. Reach up, hand on the hip, bend the front knee, pivot. This is the important part. Pivot forward, hand on the brick, and then begin to open the chest. Lift the kneecaps, open the chest as you stretch the arm up, look up at the thumb, and I'm totally against the wall, so you have a chance to use the wall for stability, those of you with balance that might be compromised. And then hand on the hip, look down, bend the front knee, stretch back, come up, and step or jump together. Second way we're going to do it is using the wall with one leg. So I'm going to take the brick out here. I'm going to judge the distance, which is the length of my leg, by putting the back foot into Trikonasana. So it's sideways against the wall, and I'm going to stretch down into my Trikonasana pose. So I'm checking the distance, hand on the hip, bend the front knee, same procedure. So I'm going to now pivot onto the front foot, press the back foot into the wall, so now you've still got stability, back foot is holding, front foot is holding, and you've got a hand on the brick. So three places as you open the chest and stretch up. So looking up at the thumb, rolling the rib cage open towards the sky. And then hand on the hip, look down, bend the knee, stretch back into Trikonasana. Come up. Second side. <clears throat> I'm reaching down, stretching up. And then hand on the hip as I look down, catch the brick, press the foot into the wall, open the chest. Reach the arm up. So again, this is a very stable pose because you have three touch points, three points of contact. Release the hand, look down, stretch the leg back, and come up. Third time, we'll do it on the mat. Freestanding. So this is one of the poses that I would say is great for this, uh, this time of pandemic because you're filling the chest, expanding the rib cage. It's a great immunity booster. Tadasan, jump into a wide stride. Take your trick on asan. And then hand on the hip as you look down, bend the front knee, take the brick just in front of the little toe, and come up, open the chest, stretch the arm up. And here's where you can decide, you can stay here for a few breaths, or maybe you can stay here for a little longer. So 
So some deep breathing. And then hand on the hip, look down, reach back, triple nice and come up. Last side. So half bound, um, forward bend. And the way we're going to do this is, again, using a chair. I'm going to begin with a preparation pose facing you, then I'll turn sideways using the chair so that you get both angles. So to begin with, standing on the left leg, bring the right leg up, left hand under the ankle, right hand under the shin, and lift it high. So allow the knee to drop down a little, lift the ankle up, so you're clasping it almost like a baby in front of you. So you're getting to move, get a little mobility in the hip, and just bring it up as high as you can. Maybe that you're further down, do what you can, and that's the preparation. So second side, put the weight on the right foot, bring the left leg up, and again, hold the ankle, hold the calf, and you can rock it from side to side, rocking the baby. This is a a preparation for the pose. So you can do this several times each side so that you get to that familiarity with the hip moving, the pelvis opening, the groins opening, getting ready for our half Padmasana, half lotus. Then I'm facing this way to do the next part. So standing on the left leg, bring the right leg up, same thing, you're bringing it up high. Then you release the knee down as you bring the ankle in close to the body. Now if this isn't looking likely, you can use a strap and then modify the pose so that you always have your hand holding the strap. So for example, if you need to have a strap around the leg, then you would simply reach forward with one hand. All right, so we have to modify poses all the time, which is why we have these props. So again, standing on the left leg, we're going to bring the right leg up, release the knee down into half Padmasana. Now I've got a hand on my uh, foot so that I'm holding it in place. So we'll be there for a moment, hips facing forward, knee releasing down. So this is the second stage. Release again. Always good to do some preparation before going straight into a pose. So bring the ankle up, the knee up, and then Fold the foot so that the sole of the foot faces up, the knee releases down. And take the tailbone in so you're standing tall. And we can do this a couple of times. Bring the other one up again. And then the left. So the next part of the pose will be to get the forward stretch. Then we'll go down to the ground for the final part. So standing on the left leg, bring the right leg up. Tuck it into... Ada Bada, half bound, and then take your reach forward. So you're practicing getting that foot tucked into the groin as you release the knee down and reach forward. Keep an evenness about the hips, and then walk back and release. Standing on the right foot, bring the left up. Release the knee down, take the sole of the foot towards the ceiling, and if you can hold it there, great, if not, use your strap. As you reach forward, stretching the upper body, lengthening both sides of the trunk evenly, lengthening, lengthening. And then come up and release. So the next time we're going down onto the mat, but just like in Vrikshasana, the last pose, if you need bricks, have them ready so that you can place your hands on the bricks instead of on the floor. And then we've got to balance by catching the foot behind us. So we'll do that part first. 
standing on the left leg, bring the right leg up. And let's practice this. You're going to bring the same side hand behind you, catch the foot. Now you may have to lean forward a little to catch the foot, or you may in fact need your strap. So keep it handy, bring the foot up. If you need the strap, take it around and with the other hand, catch it behind you. So this is how you would do the pose with the strap. Simply take the forward bend and you've got the, the bound angle behind you. All right, we're gonna do it slightly differently. And I'm gonna switch hands on the way down, which is a small trick or a method of getting into it, let's say. Standing on the left leg, bring the right leg up. Now I could bring the hand right around and catch, but it makes my descent rather twisted. So I'm gonna hold it with the opposite hand, take my forward bend, and then on the way down, catch the foot. Take the left hand onto the floor, and then slowly bring the hand out to the side, release the head down. So now I'm tucking the foot closely into the groin so that the chest is coming into the thigh as I release the head down, keep the knee releasing down, release the head. So you're in half Padmasana standing, using your breath for the balance. Now as you come up, lift the kneecap of the standing leg, press into the foot, and lift up, release the leg. You might need to bend the knee to come up. Second side, take a breath. Okay, bring up the left leg, standing on the right leg. Release the knee down, sole of the foot up, and then you can practice taking that hand around and catch it, or take your strap. I'm going to use the opposite hand as I go down and then switch it on the way down to help me balance and help me keep my forward bend. So taking the hand down now, I've got my left hand on my left foot, half Padmasana, and I'm going to lengthen through the front chest and release the head down. Take the head in closer to the knee. Tuck the foot into the groin. And then to come up, lift the kneecap, press down with the foot, look forward, and come up. Tadasana. So now you can press the pause button, do it again. Virabhadrasana 3 is a powerful pose. Harmony, power, poise, balance, all of these things is what this pose gives you. So a great invigorating pose to be doing at this time when the world is at a standstill. I've got a chair each side, but you can simply use one chair and turn to face the opposite direction when we take it to the other side. So we'll begin in Tadasana, jump into a wide stride, stretch the arms out to the very tips of the fingers, outside edges of the feet down, press the thighs back, bring the arms up, turn to your right and come down to a right angle. Make sure the heel is not beyond the knee, turn the back foot in any amount, lift the arms back to the ears. So this is a great pose all of itself. This is Virabhadrasana 1. And from here we're doing an extension to Virabhadrasana 3. So lay yourself over your thigh, stretch forward, and place the hands on your chair or your table. Now here we're going to pivot one more time. So using the back foot, we're going to step up and find that balance standing on the right leg. Press the hands into your stable support at the front. Press the left leg behind you and even out the pelvis. Keep the head in neutral, looking slightly forward. And imagine 
Somebody pulling on your hands at the front and your foot at the back to lengthen the body. This tones the abdominal muscles, helps with your breath, and is great for runners. So all you runners out there, take heed. Come back, bend the front knee, reach way back. Come back to Virabhadrasana one, and then feet towards the front, take a breath. Turning to the left, turn the back heel in, come down to warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Bring the arms back. And we're going to pivot onto the front foot, lay the trunk over the thigh, reach forward, and extend. Extending through the back leg, keeping the pelvis level, lengthening. So this is where the balance comes in, and also the gripping of the abdominal area to keep that healthy. The full pose, of course, is balancing <laughs> with, with no chair. So that's not the one we're doing today. Use your breath for balance. And then to come out, bend the knee, reach back, stretch up high, and toes forward, jump. Parasana. So our next pose is Lolasana, also a balancing pose. And this one takes a little bit of technique, a little bit of arm and wrist strength. So if you don't get it first time, don't worry, you can practice this one on your own. I'm using bricks, the full pose of course is with the hands on the mat, but we'll use bricks today. And this is how we get into the pose. Come on to all fours, tabletop position, and then cross your left shin over your right calf and sit back. So I'm going to do that from the side so that you can see it. I'm going to take um, on all fours. I'm going to lift up my left shin, place it over the opposite side. So I'm not moving my knees, just the shin. Come back. So now one knee is above the other. I've got the bricks beside me. You can have them on the bigger height or the lower height, just beside the hips. Sit tall. And then get ready to suck in the abdomen, lift the upper back in a powerful way, almost like a grizzly bear, it's got power up here. You're gonna stack your power in the upper back, suck in and gather the legs up. So you're gonna gather the legs, compact the hips as you press into the brick. So let's do it, take a breath in. On the exhalation, gather the hips, press into the brick and lift the arms, lift the legs up. Gather them high and swing. This is like an uh, earring, lolasana. And then release down. Come back into your tabletop. Now lift up the right shin, press it on the left calf. Sit back, so there's an unevenness about the knees. That's how it's meant to look. Hands beside you. Scoop in the abdomen, lift the upper back. Press the hands in, inhale. Exhale as you compact the hips, lift up the legs and swing. And then release. Take aside the bricks. Lie on your back. Keep one brick with you. And we're going into Setubanda. So be here for a moment. Catch your breath. Then take your brick, lift up the hips, place it under the sacrum. So the feet are parallel to the edge of the mat, shoulders are rolled under, and the palms are up. So this is the first stage. This may be where you stop your bus. Take a few breaths in this position with the brick at this height. And then for those that want to go further, you take out the brick, move the feet in, lift the hips up some more, and take the brick under the sacrum. Place the feet down, roll the shoulders back, 
and connect the hands behind the brick. Press down the inner foot, the inner heel, roll the inner thighs towards each other as you lift the pelvis, lift the chest, look into the heart. And then find a quiet moment. Maybe even close your eyes. So if you need to adjust the pose, shoulders are rolled under, inner feet pressed down, inner thighs roll towards each other, throat soft, eyes soft. And then, if you want to press pause and stay longer, that's a great idea. I have to move on. So, lifting up the hips, take away the back, and come up and down once or twice to ease yourself into the descent. As you descend, take the upper buttock down first, lengthening the spine. Stretch out the legs, open the shoulders, and you're ready for Shavasana. Completely let go. Let the eyelids feel heavy. Soften the tongue, let it lie in the floor of the mouth. And let go.